Capricorn had many men, and every one of them was feared in the surrounding towns and villages. They stank of cold smoke, they stank of sulfur and everything that reminds you of fire. Whenever one of them passed by, people closed their doors and hid under the stairs with their children. They called them fire fingers and bloodhounds. Capricorn's men had many names. They were feared by day, and by night they made their way into dreams and poisoned them. But there was one who was feared even more than Capricorn's villains. Maggie felt as if her voice was growing stronger with every word she read. It seemed to grow until it filled the arena. Folk called him the Shadow. Two more lines at the bottom of the page, then turn it over. Fenolio's words were waiting. Look at this, Maggie, he had whispered when he showed her the sheet of paper. What an artist I am, eh? Is there anything in the world better than words on the page? Magic signs, the voices of the dead, building blocks to make wonderful words, worlds better than this one, comforters, companions in loneliness, keepers of secrets, speakers of the truth, all those glorious words. Taste every word, Maggie, whispered No's voice inside her. Savor it on your tongue. Do you taste the colors? Do you taste the wind and the night? The fear and the joy? And the love? Taste them, Maggie, and everything will come to life. Folk called him Capricorn's shadow. How the sh hissed as it passed her lips. How darkly the sound of the O oh formed in her mouth. He came only when Capricorn called him, she read. Sometimes he was red as fire, sometimes gray as the ash to which fire turns all that it devours. He darted out of the earth as fast as flames licked their way up wood. His fingers and even his breath brought death. He rose before his master's feet, soundless, faceless, scenting his way like a hound on the trail and waiting for his master to point to the victim. It was said that Capricorn had commanded one of the trolls who understand the whole art of fire and smoke to create the shadow from the ashes of his victims. No one was sure, for it was also said that Capricorn had ordered those who called the shadow to life to be killed. All that everyone knew was that he was immortal invulnerable and pitiless, like his master. Maggie's voice died away as if the wind had blown it from her lips. Something was rising from the gravel that covered the football field. It grew taller. It stretched its ashen limbs. The night air suddenly stank of sulfur. That stench burned Maggie's eyes so that the letters blurred. But she must go on reading while the eerie creature grew taller and taller. Yet one night, a mild and starlit night, the shadow heard not Capricorn's vo voice when it was called forth, but the voice of a girl, and when she called his name he remembered. He remembered all those from whose ashes he was made, all the pain and all the grief. Good evening and welcome to the Gothic Bohemian Salon. This is Julifer de Winter, and tonight I'm here with one of the books that I read once a year. The title of tonight's book is Inkheart. Inkheart was also made into a film. The film stars Brendan Fraser, Helen Mirren, and uh, Jim Broadbent. I'll be talking about it a little bit more later. The book is part of a trilogy. The other books in the trilogy are Ink Spell and Ink Death. You can see that these are pretty hefty books. This is actually a good thing. The book is also available um, as a 16 disc audio set read by Brendan Fraser so if you don't have the time to sit down and read a book you can listen to it 
Inkheart is a book about um, a man who's able to, um, who, well, a man with a very special gift. Mortimer Fulchart, also known as Silverton, has the unique capability of being able to read characters straight out of books and into our world. Unfortunately, this gift goes haywire when he's reading aloud to his wife and daughter one evening, and his wife disappears along with the two cats in her lap, and three uh, confused and dazed men arrive in her place. Two of the men are uh, evil villain um, sorts and try to attack Mortimer Fulchart, while the third, um, a man named Dustfinger, uh, a performer and fire eater, tries to help Mortimer uh, fight off the other two. They succeed in fighting them off, and Capricorn, one of the men, and Basta, his sort of sidekick, go out into the night and uh, basically set up shop um, somewhere uh, in the mountains of Italy. Dustfinger disappears into the night as well, but he is not able to adapt to our world as well, so he's um, basically trying to um, find Mortimer, who's gone into hiding with his daughter, um, in order to be read back into the book. Dustfinger would do anything to get back to his wife and daughter who are back in Inkheart, but unfortunately this um, even extends to him basically betraying Mortimer and leading Capricorn straight to him. This is how the book starts, and um, it goes uh, and gets more exciting from there. These books were written for children, but they're completely suitable for adults. I recommend them strongly. They uh, have magic and mystery, and fairies, mermaids, uh, trolls and giants, um, fire eaters, fire raisers, uh, princes, um, wonderful names uh, of places and people uh, like the Outer Head or Umbria and the Laughing Prince or the Black Prince. Um, the characters are fascinating and you even get a glimpse into the uh, profession of a bookbinder, as that's um, Silvertongue's profession. The bookbinding aspect of the uh, book itself is actually quite fascinating. The process is um, described in loving detail, and it makes you want to go out and learn how to bind books yourself. There's also a lot about illumination in a later book, and uh, once again, it makes you want to learn how to do illumination yourself. Um, so this is a book that I read once a year. It's um, not a incredibly complex story, but it's enough to engage the adult mind, and it certainly engaged mine over and over again through the years. I'm uh, pleased that you were able to join me for the Gothic Bohemian Salon. Thank you so much, and do have a good evening. Good night.
just a quick po postscript. My makeup tonight is Ilamasca um, Foundation with um, Hourglass Veil Primer and a little bit of um, Makeup Forever Foundation mixed in with the Ilamasca. I'm wearing um, a combination of eyeshadows. Uh, the major one is um, this uh, Prestige eyeshadow in Raisin with um, this uh, this ancient <laughs> number seven um, magenta plus um, the this black or actually charcoal sparkly baked um, shadow and this is from uh, Maybelline this is Maybelline Eye Studio and unfortunately once again it's too small for me to read with contact lenses in and as the deep black um, I use this trope black uh, this is um, a beauty supply brand. I'm not sure if they make it anymore, but it's, it's one of the blackest blacks I've ever seen. And then um, I'm wearing uh, I'm wearing the um, rather expensive and um, very, very pale um, Vichy Dermablend Setting Powder, which is um, absolutely paper white. And the um, Too Faced uh, Pencil in black, eyeliner pencil in black. This is fantastic. My lipstick is um, New York City. This one is called Burgundy. As you can see, it's a nice burgundy. And I'm using a lip pencil from. Um, I think this is Palladio, and it's called um, Blackberry. There you go. And I'm wearing um, false eyelashes from Daiso, <laughs> which is great. I got false eyelashes on again. And I used um, the eyelash glue from the uh, Fergie Wet n Wild eyelashes. The reason I like this so much is that it comes with a wand inside the tiny little bottle, which is so convenient. And it actually screws on. It's um, a very refined little tiny bottle of stuff. Um, I also have uh, Too Faced ins uh, Insurance Eye Primer on and um, some uh, Christian Dior Creme de Rose on my lips underneath my lipstick. And that, I believe, is the makeup, all the makeup that I'm wearing tonight. Thank you.